Section 6.6 .6 is phase shifts on sine and cosine graphs. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So we've talked about transformations before, um, left and right horizontal shifts. So if we have something subtracted from x, then it's going to shift you right that amount. If you have something added to x, it's going to shift you left that amount. This is the Greek letter phi. So in trig, we usually use Greek letters. We've also talked about kind of the parent functions of sine and cosine graphs and also what happens when you have vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions. So this letter A out in front is going to vertically stretch or compress sine and cosine depending on if it's bigger than one or less than one. The absolute value of that number is what we call the amplitude. So that's the distance from the x-axis or the equilibrium point to the top or bottom, the highest or lowest point of the graph. The period, how long it takes to complete one cycle of the function, is 2 pi divided by omega. The parent function has a period of 2 pi for both sine and cosine. So if we have some kind of horizontal stretch or compression, that will affect how long it takes to complete one cycle. So then if we're adding in vertical and horizontal shifts, this is the general form. y equals a sine or cosine omega times the quantity x minus phi plus c, where c is your vertical shift and omega is your phase shift or your horizontal shift. If you're looking at a graph and you're trying to figure out the amplitude and vertical shift from the graph or trying to write the equation from the graph, the amplitude is the difference between the max and the min divided by 2, and the vertical shift is the average of the largest y and the smallest y. So add them together and divide those by two. So now we want to find the amplitude period phase shift vertic and vertical shift of this trig function and graph. Before you do anything though, whenever you have a number multiplied by x, you always want to factor it out. So if you factor out the two, you get four sine of two times the quantity x minus pi over two. Now you can accurately read the period and the phase shift. If you don't factor this out, you end up shifting incorrectly. So go ahead and pause the video and find these four things, the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and any vertical shift based off our general formula we had on the previous slide. So on this function, period is its sine, so 2 pi divided by whatever omega is. Omega is what's multiplied by x, so 2 pi divided by 2, so pi. So this period, it takes half as long of a, as a normal trig function, a normal sine function, to repeat its cycle. Its amplitude, it's been multiplied by 4. All your y coordinates have been stretched by 4. So instead of going from negative 1 to 1, it's going to go from negative 4 to 4. Phase shift is phi. We represent it with a phi. It's whatever is added or subtracted from x after you factor out your omega. So we have a minus pi over 2, so that means we're going to shift pi over 2 to the right. And then there's nothing on the ad added on the end, so we're going to have no vertical shift. You can graph these using the tables that we've done for all our other transformations, using our anchor points that we talked about in 5.4. So down here we have the anchor points for sine of x. Go ahead and pause the video and either complete the table using the transformations or just do your transformations step by step and graph this function y equals 4 sine of 2x minus pi. So here we have the graph, whether you did it just by straight transformations or you use the table. So down here we have the table that represents all the transformations. And so this is what one period of this function would look like. We have our period represent the fact that it goes from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. That's a length of pi. So our one period is a length of pi in the x direction. Our amplitude is represented in the height of a bump, which is 4. Our phase shift is represented in the fact that instead of starting at 0, 0, it shifted over and is now starting at pi over 2, 0, and then there is no vertical shift, so that's why all the points, the middle points, are still at 0, 0. So now pause the video and find amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift 
for this new function, y equals negative 2 cosine of 2x plus pi over 2 plus 1. Make sure first thing you always want to do is factor out this 2. So you have a 2 times next. That's always your first step. Factor that out first before you start to find all of these items. So given this, our period is 2 pi divided by 2 because omega, what, what's multiplied by x, is a 2. So 2 pi divided by 2, our period again is pi. Amplitude is the absolute value of a. The reason its absolute value is amplitude is a distance, so it's going to be a positive 2. Our phase shift, once we factor out this 2, we have an x plus 4 inside here. So we have a plus, sorry, an x plus pi over 4. So we have a pi over 4 here, which means we're going to go pi over 4 to the left. And then we have a plus 1 on the end, so that means our graph is going to shift up 1. So now that we have these four pieces written down, go ahead and pause the video and graph this function. So here is the graph of y equals negative 2 cosine of 2x plus pi over 2 plus 1. So you have a reflection across the x-axis from the negative out in front, a vertical stretch by 2, and then a shift up 1. So your amplitude is 2. That's that distance from the middle point to the highest or the middle point to the lowest. And then a vertical shift up 1. That's why all your middle points are now 1 instead of sitting on the x-axis. You have a horizontal compression by 2, so it shrunk all the x-coordinates by 2, and that's why your period is now a pi, a length of pi, instead of a length of 2 pi. And you have a phase shift or a horizontal shift left pi over 4. So now instead of your initial point starting at x equals 0, it now starts at x equals pi over 4. Now we want to go the opposite direction. They give us the characteristics and we want to write a sine function given those characteristics. So if we look at number 14, they tell us our amplitude, which is our a value. It specifies up at the top that they want a to be positive, so in this case a is just going to be 3. They give us our period, which we call capital T, as pi over 2. And they gave us our phase shift phi to be positive 2, which means 2 to the right. The only issue is they give us our period, but they don't give us omega. So we have to use our period to be able to find omega. So we have to remember that our period is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. And now we need to solve for omega. So if we solve this for omega, we end up with that omega is equal to 4. So now we have all the pieces of information, and we can just write it as an equation. And here we have our equation. We have an amplitude, an a value of 3. We have a omega of 4 that we got out of the period. And we have a phase shift of 2 to the right, so x minus 2. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and do the same thing for number 16. Take that information and write an equation, a sine function equation, that has those characteristics. So now here's our equation, y equals 2 sine of 2 times x plus 2. We have an a value, an amplitude of 2 they give us, a period of pi. Pi is equal to 2 pi divided by omega, so that means omega had to equal 2 and then a phi, a phase shift of 2 to the left. So fill that in. A is 2, omega is 2, and x plus 2 is your phase shift. So we've added now vertical shifts and phase shifts or horizontal shifts to our sine and cosine graphs.